If there are some things that we believe as an organization are out of bounds, I think deception in our investigative processes internally is out of bounds. Um, then we're going to list them as out of bounds so everybody knows. Then there's no secrets. I want any secrets. The, uh, the other piece is our disciplinary process. Right now, I currently make a decision on a case, a disposition, and if it's if that disposition is sustained, meaning somebody is, we believe somebody's guilty of a violation of one of our conduct rules, I then assign discipline to that. And then the, the employee either accepts that discipline or they can appeal to a board of inquiry, which is a hearing. But if you're, if, if and I would say pretty much any employee, but particularly underranking employees, which are the majority of our organization. If the chief of police has already made a decision against you and disciplined you and then tells you you can have a hearing and the chief of police is the chair of that hearing, how do you feel you have it? You have a fair shake? I, I mean, I don't. And, and I'm, not, uh -huh. I'm not ridiculing that process. There are many, many agencies that utilize that process. I don't like it because I think there's a better way to accomplish fairness to the employee and still maintain discipline, organizational discipline, and self-discipline among each and every employee to maintain a culture of integrity in the organization. And that's what, that's what this new process will do for us. We're not just going to implement a process and assume it works. We're going to look at it over time. I want to I want to create as level a playing field as I can. We're, we're uh, Chief, um, Assistant Chief the White Cross, there by the door, is uh, on YouTube. The two audios on YouTube, and if someone has a computer here with uh, internet access, maybe they could pull it up. But he's on YouTube, uh, violating North Carolina personnel privacy. Um, explain how the community can trust the police when your administrators are breaking the law without consequences. Well, you know, um, for those of you who don't know, this is uh, Charles Chapman. It's Chapel. irrelevant who I am. It does matter who you are, It, it doesn't matter. I'm a citizen. Um, uh, you are a citizen. Well, then it doesn't matter And it does I'm matter who you are. Um, because the reason that is out on YouTube is because of It's irrelevant who I found on YouTube is it a violation is of law, Chief. because of, yeah, I know. And is it, it a violation of law? And to know who violated that law. And I'm I don't not gonna, Charles, ladies and gentlemen, Every community meeting now I go to, Charles wants to debate me in public about his, his personnel action and, and the personnel action of other people. So I'm not going to engage him and I'm not going to engage his issue. Uh, and I, I regret that it has to happen in this forum. I suspect it's going to happen in all four because it's happening in every community forum I go to now. Um, but this is, uh, this is a matter of uh, a personnel matter. No, it's not. That it's a violation I'm, of law. I'm, Charles, I'm not going to debate you. The, there is a, there is a process, Sir, would you please there, there is a process for adjudicating discipline in this organization. Charles not only was a, a commander who adjudicated under that policy, but he was adjudicated under it himself. And when that poli when he disagrees with the result of that policy and his appeals have been exhausted, he has a step, like every other citizen who suffers what they believe to be an adverse personnel action, and that is to litigate it. He chooses not, he chooses not to do that. He chooses to come to these forums and try and try it out here, and I refuse to do that. It's not fair to my employees, it's not fair to anybody, and it's certainly not fair to you, because it's not the forum. Chief, I've uh, been a pastor in this city for 36 years. I happen to also be president of the NAACP, Greensboro. And to say that there is no, uh, there is a policy and a practice by which you can air your complaints through channels by, by using grievances and other measures that have been implemented through the department. Would you say that when that procedure is not honored, that there should be corrective actions 
to correct the blue breaches within the, prop, uh, the process. And that reason I'm asking the question is, though you say uh, Charles interrupts the meetings, he's, as he said, a citizen, and has given 23 years of his life to law enforcement. I think that the citizenry has a right to hear what is his complaint with the city. And I don't think that as a citizen, uh, he should be aired out or, or singled out, or as you say, you refuse to do this. There's a process called adjudication. But there's also a process by which it is supposed to be handled internally. You have, you have uh, professional standards. You have internal affairs. So to say that there's not a practice or policy in place where what he has to say should also be considered, and not only just from the departmental perspective, but the citizens who, who, who depended on him for 23 years. You've just come here. But for 23 years, I think it's very right for the citizens to hear what his complaints is, not just you, and uh, because I know that you just arrived. And many people have not heard just how mistreated he and others were through the process. And I think that's why he's asking these questions over and over again. I, I think the applause just indicated that everybody has heard enough. There is a process, and that process was followed for Captain Cherry just as it was for any other employee in this organization and has been for 30 years. And that process includes a, ju a judicial review if he is inclined to make that judicial review. That's his call, that's not mine. And it's not the community's call. And that's all I'll say about that matter. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Bill Menis. We've met before. You came to the uh, Neighborhood Congress and I enjoyed your speech there. This is about the same, same spiel and I'm getting more about it every time I hear it. But I just wanted to say, uh, I think you've got an ambitious plan and I hope you stick with it. Uh, I only have one question. Uh, two days ago, there was a roadblock, a checkpoint on Phillips Avenue, and I, there was a lot. There was an article in the newspaper about it, and it really concerned me because it, it addresses trust of the community, and I, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about that. Sure. Um, <clears throat> earlier, earlier, uh, and and uh, I'm not sure exactly what time it was, but uh, uh, <clears throat> Assistant Chief Rogers could probably say. Uh, or Lieutenant Hinson, but we, we had a road check there. We've had a number of concerns. We did a community walk up through that area as well. Uh, we've had a number of concerns in that community. And so when we go in and we do our traffic details, uh, we, our typical protocol is to follow up at some point later. And I don't know what that point was, but uh, that was uh, a coincidence. It was one I didn't catch. Uh, and as soon as we were alerted to it, we cut it. Fortunately, I think it occurred during a period of the day when voter turnout typically is lower than at any other point in the day. Um, but as soon as we were alerted to it, we, we canceled it. Um, and that's all I know to say about that if uh, uh, yeah. Assistant Chief Rogers wants and to comment on it. The, um, the traffic unit that uh, performed that check followed under my command. And I um, absolutely miss the connection of doing a license check uh, on election day. I take full responsibility for that. Uh, Chief Miller <coughs> had no um, control over it. Nobody in um, city uh, government had any control. It was a request through my chain of command um, to do a license check. Um, that squad, every two weeks, that squad gets together, do a special assignment. They chose that location. I approved it. And, you know, it was, uh, looking back, I wish I had put the two together because, I, you know, I would have canceled it. 
But as soon as I got word that it sent a negative message to the community, we broke it down. Do you normally have, have checkpoints during the day? Yes, we do. Yes. They do. And, and it's every other Tuesday they do a, a pretty large scale one and they move it around the city. And that's just where it fell. Yes, sir. Um, there was something that was brought to my attention um, that kind of, I don't know, alarmed me as a citizen, but there was a, actually a legal process. It actually went to court and everything. Um, and there was a, an, uh, an officer who, was or, who, who did an investigation of a domestic violence situation and was, didn't find any reason to bring charges against the particular person um, in the domestic situation. Um, an officer did the investigation, did the infrared, you know, spoke with the young lady, spoke with others, and, and was taking testimony from folks who may have been, you know, intoxicated. And so, in a sense, uh, this, in, this Greensboro officer, who's an investigator, felt there was no need to bring charges against this particular person. And then in court, on stand, said that, he, he professed to that in court, in adjudication process, stated that, but then also after that and said that he was ordered to by someone over him. And I, he said this in, you know, in, 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 in the courtroom. So I, I assume that this officer was definitely telling the truth. A sworn officer of the law in Greensboro police office. And, and I just, I don't know, I just have a problem with me being a regular citizen and an officer do an investigation on me and then finds no reason to bring charges against me, but then in court testifies that he was ordered to by a superior person over him. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I have a problem with that. So I don't know if you can address that. Well, I can address that very simply. One, I, I think I know who you're talking about, but, but that's irrelevant. Um, when we manage our cases, we have supervisors in this organization who supervise our police officers. And we're responsible for managing our crime in our city. And we're responsible for managing our investigations. And we're responsible for saying what goes on and what doesn't go on. So I think that's entirely appropriate. Next you question. think it's appropriate that an investigative yes. officer, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in looking back. Uh, there are lessons from the past you can learn. Uh, you learn them, you move on. They influence how you do business in the future. But I'm not readdressing the stuff from the past. I'm just not. It's been dealt with, and I'm moving on. You said earlier that over the last 30 years, you felt as if all of the issues within the police department had been dealt with appropriately. Um, you know, I think that that 30 year thing sort of takes us all the way back to 1979 and what happened at that particular point in time. And I'm not sure, you know, that we would want to say that all the issues around 1979 were handled appropriately. Um, secondly, um, there, are, there is a group of people within Greensboro, mostly uh, black and Latino, folks with allies within the white okay, community. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to cut this because it's my forum. Okay. And it's my form for the community. It's not my form for 1979. Sir, you and I spoke for two and a half hours along with Reverend Brown, and five, there were five pastors in there to talk with me I'll be about these just issues. A second. And I told you that I was not going back to 1979. Well, you just did when you said 30 no, years ago. No, I was talking about our disciplinary policy. And I am not going back to 1979. This is a form for people who live in the Southern Division to talk about the police department. Not your form. I've met with you. I've spent four and a half hours meeting to discuss the changes. When you all left, what Reverend Brown said to me, and you all concurred, was that you were the most encouraged that you ever have been in the last eight years with the direction we're headed, and yet now you're challenging me at every community meeting. And that's all I'm going to say about that. That's okay. it. 